I am Francesca Morgante. I am an Italian neurologist working at St. George's Hospital in London, mainly working on people with dystonia. I've been working with dystonia for 20 years since I was a student of medicine and during my training I was lucky to receive specific training for dystonia because I was working in an institution that had a research program and a clinical program for dystonia. I've been working with adult onset dystonia mainly in the first part of my career, but also I've been working more recently in uh, uh, young onset dystonia, uh, especially with adolescents uh, that require more advanced treatments like deep brain stimulation. During these years, I've been conducting research on dystonia, but I also developed a new treatment for dystonia like the brain stimulation. I work with people with dystonia from their diagnosis to the treatment. And one of the most difficult issues to face when diagnosing a person with dystonia um, is uh, to communicate what having dystonia means, which is the impact of having abnormal movements in everyday life, and if those movements will progress, affecting different other body districts. Uh, people is very concerned because uh, there is a very scarce knowledge about dystonia. They want to receive many information. So one of the issues is to deliver as many information to people with dystonia. Another issue with diagnosis in a younger patient is genetic, because dystonia in younger individual might be due to very rare genetic diseases and the information related to this type of dystonia is very difficult to deliver because most of the time we don't even know which kind of genetic condition is associated to dystonia. And parents want to be reassured again about the progression of dystonia if dystonia will also involve uh, impairment of cognitive abilities and they want to know if their children would be able to have a normal life or an independent life. So when choosing the right treatment, it's important to consider the distribution of dystonia, the disability by dystonia and also the age of onset. Surely, next to botulinum toxin, oral medication, and the brain stimulation is very important to physiotherapy and in general, neurorehabilitation. The reason for that is that dystonia may affect different tasks in everyday life. And people with dystonia use many compensatory strategies to overcome the uh, abnormal movements. Some of these compensatory strategies, they can even worsen dystonia itself. So having physiotherapy next to botulinum toxin, the brain stimulation and oral medication, it's really crucial to get rid of uh, compensatory strategy that indeed worsen dystonia. Dystonia is meant to be a rare disease, however, all the, the data we have from epidemiological studies, which are studies that uh, give us information about the prevalence of disease, are difficult to interpret because dystonia is a difficult disease to diagnose. Is about, the prevalence is about uh, 16 person per 100,000 inhabitants in, uh, on an average of uh, studies conducted in this field. But that prevalence change based on the age of onset and the type of dystonia. Cervical dystonia seems to be the most frequent dystonia in adults. Uh, but it's important to consider that in South Europe, uh, blepharospasm seems to be a very frequent focal uh, dystonia in adults. Uh, maybe this is due to the exposure to the sun, this is not clear. Regarding generalized dystonia, the, da the data are very difficult to interpret and again, this seems to be a rare disease, uh, despite in 
many families with uh, cases of uh, generalized dystonia, uh, you can also find people with focal dystonia that have not been diagnosed. So this is a rare disease, but uh, is it likely that is uh, less rare than thought? It's for sure underdiagnosed. The most common form of dystonia I treat is cervical dystonia in adults. And uh, I treat this dystonia mainly with botulinum toxin and the brain stimulation. This is a surgical procedure that allows to deliver an electrical therapy into the brain and it helps us to modify the abnormal firing in the brain that is produced by dystonia. The effect of the brain stimulation is uh, quite different from botulinum toxin because with botulinum toxin we can make weaker the abnormal muscles that are hyperactive in dystonia whereas in the brain stimulation patient, we are able to normalize in a more consistent way the abnormal movement and in general the way people with dystonia move. Usually this has an effect on abnormal posturing, on tremor and also on pain, which is a significant component of cervical dystonia in adults and young adults. The research in dystonia has grown a lot over the past years. We uh, have uh, uh, several studies that had attempted to understand the mechanism uh, in the brain that produce dystonia. Uh, compared to even five years ago, uh, we are trying to define if there are different mechanisms for different types of dystonia, and surely there might be different mechanisms that we will be able to target with a more specific cure. Also, the studies on genetic dystonia has helped a lot over the past years because they highlight abnormalities in chemical substance in the brain, which might be potential targets for cure. So uh, this amount of research uh, is providing very positive feedback in uh, uh, thinking that maybe in few years we are going to develop more target cure for different types of dystonia. And for sure, uh, my understanding of these studies uh, uh, provides a very positive attitude for the future for people with dystonia.